Hello chess friends, in this video I have for you an incredible must-see game from a young 14-year-old Magnus Carlsen in which he goes on a sacrificial rampage against his master level opponent named Ostmo, tearing open his kingside, bravely giving up multiple pieces in pursuit of a winning sequence that requires absolute precision or else it will utterly fail. This is a performance you simply must see and it begins right now. Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces begins the game with knight to f3. From Ostmo, we have knight to f6. Now c4, e6, d4, and b6. Ostmo is preparing to develop his bishop to a6. Since he's planning the move d5, this will be the most active diagonal for his bishop. Attacking the pawn on c4, since anywhere else, this bishop would just be staring at a black pawn. b7, it would be staring at d5, and along this diagonal, it's blocked by the e6 pawn. So this is a popular method for solving the problem of the inactive bishop in this opening. Carlsen plays g3. Now bishop a6 as planned, attacking c4. Carlsen defends with b3 and prepares bishop to b2. He's going to go for the double bishop fianchetto. Now Ostmo plays an inaccurate move. He plays b5, which looks good on the surface, putting further pressure on the c4 pawn. But Carlsen plays the most accurate move. c takes b5, giving up a pawn which is controlling the center, but after bishop takes b5, he's going to gain a tempo when he plays knight c3 because it will come with an attack on the bishop. So black is losing some time here. But first Carlsen plays bishop to g2, d5 from Ostmo, Carlsen castles, knight b to d7, and here comes knight to c3 hitting the bishop, which moves to its best square, a6. Now we got rook to e1 from Carlsen, getting the rook out of the view of the bishop here. So the e4 can be played. Bishop d6. And now Carlsen plays bishop to b2. Now the engine says that playing e4 right away before black has a chance to castle would have been a little better. And you'll see why in a moment. Ostmo castles. And now Carlsen plays e4. And after the following sequence, knight takes e4. Knight takes e4. D takes e4. Rook takes e4. Bishop to b7. Hitting the rook. If these same moves have been played without the move bishop b2 and without black having the chance to castle, at this point rook g4 would be a very nice move for white because it would come with an attack on the g-pawn since black would not be castled yet. And then if black castled, since the bishop had not played to b2 either, there would be bishop to h6. Hitting the g7 pawn again which is pinned. Of course if you move it forward you lose your rook. But in the game, black is already castled, so rook g4 would not come with an attack on the g-pawn. The bishop is no longer on this diagonal. So Carlsen instead moves his rook to h4. He's going to target the h7 pawn instead. Ostmo plays bishop e7, attacking the rook, and asking Carlsen, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay on this file? Now according to the computer, the rook should move back towards the center. It's suggesting rook to f4. But Carlsen makes a very committal move. He plays rook to h3. He's going all out for the king's side attack. Since this rook now has really nothing going for it other than the fact that it's hitting h7. If Carlsen's attack on the king's side can be defended, the rook could be very awkwardly placed on this h3 square. Ostmo now plays a good move, knight to f6, increasing his defense of h7. Now Carlsen would like to play queen c2 here, eyeing the h7 square with another piece, but bishop e4 could be played with an attack on the queen and defending h7 further. That's not good for white. So queen e2 is what Carlsen opts for. Now there are ideas of a pawn sacrifice with d5, opening up the dark squared bishop to participate in the attack. If black were to capture with the bishop, then the rook could come into play on d1 with a pin on that bishop. This could be a very well justified pawn sacrifice. So Ostmo wisely just puts a stop to that with bishop d5. Now we got rook to e1 from Carlsen. Rook c1 is also good. But Carlsen is committed to the king's side attack, preparing a possible rook lift. And now Ostmo plays an inaccurate move. He plays queen to b8. He has this ambitious idea of queen b7, creating the queen and bishop battery, eyeing the g2 square, so that this knight doesn't have a lot of options, or you're going to lose your bishop on g2, you'd pretty much only be able to go to h4. But this plan doesn't work out so well. Better would have been just a5, a4. Looking to open up the A file, get some activity for this rook. Not really easy for white to stop that plan. If you play A4, then the pawn on B3 falls. But Ostmo wants to play Queen B7 and put some pressure along this diagonal. Carlsen doesn't mind. He moves the knight right away. 
Unafraid of the light squared bishop trade, Osmo plays queen to b7, threatening to win the bishop on g2. Carlson simply takes on d5. Now the best move for black here would be to take with the pawn. That way you open the e-file and you can get some activity for your rook, oppose white's heavy pieces that way. But Osmo takes with the queen. Looks nice cosmetically, having the queen in the center of the board. But now we got queen c2 from Carlson. Little more pressure on h7. At which point, Ostmo blunders with the move c5. Again, it would be better just to play a5, a4. But this move c5 allows Carlson a winning sequence of moves, which he executes flawlessly, beginning with the move knight to g4, with the standard idea of eliminating the sole defender against checkmate on h7. This knight is the only thing preventing it. So Osmo needs to do something about the threat of knight takes f6, followed by queen takes h7 mate. And if he hadn't played c5 here, a good defense would be this move h5. And it's still the best move in the position. But because c5 has been played, it's a losing move. Here is the key line. Knight takes f6 check, bishop takes f6, d takes c5, would immediately win a pawn, but black does have bishop takes b2. And after queen takes b2, looks like maybe black is okay. He can grab the pawn on c5, but unfortunately, there is now rook to e5. Hitting the queen and hitting the pawn on h5. Queen moves, rook takes h5. White is a pawn up and is threatening checkmate. You can play f6, and while this is objectively probably lost for black, practically speaking, it's his best hope. But what was played in the game, instead of h5, was h6, which sets the stage for a beautiful sacrificial attack by Magnus Carlsen beginning with rook to e5. Hitting the black queen, which goes to f3. And now, the only winning move played by Carlsen. Knight takes h6 check. And the knight must be captured. If Ostomo were to move his king to h8, it would be a mate in three moves. Beginning with knight g4 discovered check. King g8. Knight f6 check. G takes f6. And queen h7 checkmate. So, the knight was removed from the board with g takes h6. Rook takes h6 from Carlsen threatening rook g5, checkmate. So Ostmo plays king to g7, attacking the rook on h6, which Carlsen responds to by playing rook g5 check anyway, now sacrificing a whole rook, which Ostmo must take with the move king takes h6, since it was his only legal move. And it looks like maybe Carlsen's attack has failed. He's getting a little low on attacking pieces, only the queen, the rook, and the bishop left. This rook's under attack. How to proceed as white? Take a minute and look at this position. See if you can find the only winning move for white. Carlson finds bishop c1, which is not only his only winning move, it's the only move which doesn't lose. And he must have seen this move three moves ago when he sacrificed his knight on h6. Very impressive board vision. This move bishop c1 sets up a devastating discovered check, which black has no way to avoid. The king cannot move anywhere, it has no squares. The rook cannot be eliminated, the bishop cannot be eliminated. There's no good way to block this diagonal. So Ostmo, for lack of anything better to do, grabs a pawn on d4, and now Carlsen plays rook g4, discovered check. Now if Ostmo were to make his only legal move with his king by playing king to h5, rook h4 would be checkmate. So his only other option is to block this diagonal. And the only piece that can do that, unfortunately, is his queen. So he plays queen to e3, and now his queen will be lost. But Magnus Carlsen still needs to be careful here. He only has one clearly winning move here, and it might not be obvious to everyone watching. Rook h4 check. Little in-between move, getting the rook out of the view of the knight. Osmo blocks with knight to h5, renewing the attack on the rook, now with the bishop. Carlson recognizes that if he wants to take the black queen with a pawn so that he can hang on to his bishop, this rook is going to have to be traded for one of black's minor pieces. So he sacrifices it for the knight on h5. Rook takes h5 check, which is the strongest move. After king takes h5, he has an absolutely crushing move. Carlson finds queen h7 check, which is the most decisive. But after king g4, f takes e3, this black king having been driven into white's camp, is in grave danger. Ostmo plays rook a to c8 here, attacking the bishop on c1. Carlsen makes his final peace sacrifice in this game with the brilliant 
king to g2, recognizing that after rook takes c1, which is what his opponent played, he now has a checkmate in four moves. Beginning with h3 check, king g5, queen g7 check, Ostmo moves his king to f5, g4 check, king to e4, and queen takes d4 is checkmate. So an absolutely stunning sacrificial attack by the young Magnus Carlsen, which required very precise calculation and total confidence in his own abilities as he walked a tightrope between a winning position and a losing one by finding several only moves. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe to the channel for more analysis of amazing performances by Magnus Carlsen coming your way soon.